Well, hi, everybody, and welcome to Down and Dirty HDR. I call it Down and Dirty because I'm not really an HDR artist. I do a couple of HDR things here and there, but it's not, you know, something I spend a tremendous amount of time on. But uh, on our train trip from uh, Cologne to Amsterdam, I was processing some HDRs I shot of the hotel that we're in, and I published some of those here, or at least one of them here on Google+. And... Uh, Brad was telling me that, that he shoots a lot of HDR, but he, he doesn't really process it. So I showed him how I'm processing it, and uh, he said, you ought to do a tutorial on that. So, well, here you go. So it's down and dirty HDR. So here are the five images from the hotel lobby, the same one I posted here on Google+. I am going to just take them and drag them down to the Photomatix icon, which is just off screen. It's going to pop open Photomatix Pro. And you have three clicks in here. Click one is okay. Click two is okay. Click three is pre-process. So I'm just going to hit pre-process. The reason I like Photomatix Pro is, is that it's fast. I'm not necessarily, I don't necessarily think it does the my favorite type of HDR processing, but it's twice as fast as Photoshop's and it's faster than the one I like the best, which is HDRFX Pro from Nick Software. So when I just want to get something done quickly, this is where I go. It takes about 30 seconds to get to you to the screen where you can process your images. And there it is right there. So now you just click over here where it says tone mapping because it, it looks terrible now. And then once you click this, then it looks like HDR. <laughs> All right. I actually use this preset built in just called Painterly. It's in uh, Photomatix 4, Photomatix Pro 4. I just use Painterly, which gives you this look. And I don't really do anything else. Just Painterly, and then I save it. So, uh, oh, you have to hit process first. Let's go ahead and hit process. It takes just a moment, and then it'll process it. All right, there's the process version, and the process version looks a little more, um, a little more tone mapped than the pre-processed version. So, we'll hit save as, and I'm just go ahead and save this. There it is. Now, now I switch over to Adobe Photoshop, and I open that photo, but I need to open it at, in Camera Raw to do a little pre-processing. So I click on there. I changed my format to Camera Raw right here because normally it would be a TIFF, right? But you switch it to Camera Raw here and that forces it to open in Camera Raw. I do three things in Camera Raw. Number one, I usually add some fill light just to open up the shadows a little bit. Number two, I usually add, <clears throat> excuse me, I usually add clarity. So maybe up to about 40, something like that. Then I go over here to the Lens Corrections panel and I drag the lens vignetting to the left, which darkens the edges. This is how dark the edges are. The midpoint is how far that darkening extends into the photo. And then that's it. Those are the three things I do in Camera Raw to every image. Click Open Image. And we're getting close. It's not there yet. I actually finished this off using uh, a third-party filter. And a lot of people do this. So this isn't something I came up with. Go into the Filter menu to Nick Software and choose color effects pro 3.0 and i use two of their built-in presets the first preset is called tonal contrast this adds more of the hdr effect and i use their default settings of 30 30 30 and 20. so you just click on the preset this is one of their built-in presets and click ok now you're going to go back again to the same filter nick software color effects pro 3 you're going to go to Glamour Glow. This kind of gives the whole thing this softening kind of look while still being sharp. Using the default settings, click OK, but it's a little too soft, so then I go over to the Layers palette and I lower the opacity to 30%. We're almost done. Now, I flatten the image or make a merge layer on top, but we'll just make a, we'll just flatten it just for the sake of this video. All right, now, I'm going to duplicate the layer. Press Command J on Mac or Control J on PC to duplicate the layer. Then I go and add, finish it off with my sharpening. Filter, Other, and I choose High Pass. When the High Pass filter comes up, I drag it all the way to the left until it's solid gray. And I drag it up here until I start to see lots of details come in. Something like that. I click OK. The last step is to change the blend mode from Normal to Soft Light. And the softening appears here. Now, I know that, I mean, the sharpening appears. I know that some people like to choose hard light. Hard light just seems too punchy to me. It seems too crazy sharpened. So I use soft light instead. And that's exactly how 
I did the image that you see on Google Plus earlier, and that is my extremely down and dirty, not super complicated uh, version of uh, HDR. Hope you guys enjoy it. 